Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 78 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, let's lay the foundation for uh, image segmentation using traditional machine learning. What do we mean by that? We are going to generate a whole bunch of features using digital image filters and then train a machine learning algorithm on those features to create a model that we can use to segment our images. Well, if that doesn't make sense, let's actually uh, look at the plan. But all the elements we are going to use, we have already discussed in the last three to four tutorial videos. I hope you watched this video so you should already know what Gabor filters are, what random forest is, and what support vector machines is. But I'll quickly explain that uh, as part of this tutorial. So please uh, do watch this. So the summary of our segmentation process, how are we going to do this? Step number one, we have to read both training images and masks, okay? And uh, this term mask, uh, it can, you, can, you can call it labels, for example. So what that represents is ground truth, which means we have this raw image. This is a geological example, so let me explain this. In this image, outside regions is air. Also, I have some air inside, wherever you see these dark regions. And this most of this image is composed of this light gray region, which is quartz. And these bright pixels correspond to pyrite. And we have other medium dark or slightly dark uh, gray here with some texture. And these regions are clays. So my goal is to segment a whole bunch of images that look like this. And it's a 3D volume for all of these four different regions, which means I have to provide a ground truth initially to the machine learning. This is a supervised machine learning algorithm. So I have to provide ground truth in, term, in terms of what is what. So as you can see down here, this is a mask or a labeled image where I labeled each of these regions in a different pixel value with a different pixel value. OK, so here, uh, first of all, any region that's outside that looks completely dark is a region that I did not label. For that, we gave a value of zero. So every pixel value that has a zero, a value of zero, we haven't labeled it. And then value of Z, uh, one is the one where we did label two is another region, three is another region, and four is another. And you may have your own ways of labeling, but it doesn't matter. What I recommend if you do not have a way of uh, labeling your images is uh, using a peer annotate. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and once you have a labeled image, meaning ground truth, the next step is any machine learning, it takes an input, trains it, okay? and then gives you a model. Now, if the input is only pixel values, then we may as well do histogram segmentation. So you just use Otsu or something and then say, okay, any pixel value or multi Otsu, pixel value below a certain range, all dark pixels and so on. But that doesn't work in most cases because uh, edges and other regions, I mean, we are using machine learning for a reason. So the best way to train a machine learning algorithm is to generate a whole bunch of features you know, you, if you're good at knowing which features actually work the best, then you can call it feature engineering because now you're engineering features in terms of which works uh, the best for the machine learning model. But most of the time, we probably don't know what works best. So we generate 50 to 100 different types of features from this image and then feed that into the machine learning algorithm. So when I say, how do we generate these features? This is where the term Gabor fits in. So the next thing is these go into this feature extraction process where we apply a Gabor filter. We'll talk about what that is. Just a quick reminder in a second. Uh, think of this as applying different filters. Uh, I apologize for this spelling mistake. This is supposed to be median filter. But think of applying a Gaussian filter on top of your uh, to your raw image. What do you get? A blurred image, correct? Depending on the kernel size of, Gabor, uh, of Gaussian that filtered image, now look at pixel value at every location, and that is your feature. So a Gaussian filtered image is one of the features that we are supplying to the machine learning algorithm. A median filtered image, a edge detected uh, you know, uh, uh, filter, uh, filtered image. So all of these, and Gabor by its nature generates hundreds, if you want, you know, of these responses that makes a great feature extractor for this type of approach. Okay, so the, at the end of this, what you get is 
Think of this as an Excel sheet where you have different columns. Each column represents the pixel values at uh, uh, for a given feature uh, image. So for example, I have Gaussian with a sigma value of three. At every pixel, what is the pixel value? And then median filter, sigma value three, and so on. And the last column is a label, and label is, again, is it zero, is it one, two, three, four? Label is the ground truth, okay? So I hope you're okay so far. And then we train a machine learning algorithm by feeding a whole bunch of X values and the Y value. X values are all the features, Y is the output that we are looking for. And in this case, the output is the label. So for that, we are going to use either random forest or support vector machine. In this case, I'm showing a pictorial representation of random forest and I'm fully focusing on these two because these are the primary uh, methods that most uh, uh, you know people use when it comes to machine learning and I think these are the most relevant ones anyway. So just a quick reminder about the three main things that we talked about, in fact four main things that we talked about. One is labels, the other one is features, and the other one is random forest, and the last one is support vector machines. First, labels. What do we mean by labels? You take your raw image and let's say you paint each region of interest in different color and then assign a specific pixel value. So for all the regions uh, we colored in purple, we are giving a value of, uh, let's say, one. And the ones in uh, you know red, we are giving a value of two and then three and then four. So this is what a label is. And you can do that on appear. If you haven't already signed up, go to appear.com slash annotate to get a quick look at what we are talking about here. And then once this is done, you can just export the annotation as image and then select a binary mask and then export it. And how do we do that? Let me quickly show you the process. So first of all, sign up for appear.com and then under files, upload your image. And the image can be a TIFF stack or individual TIFF files. It's up to you how you want to handle this data. In this example, I have a TIFF stack. I called it trainimages.tiff. And I click on this button that says annotate image, not the eye, but the pencil, okay? It opens up a, uh, a window like this. And now you can define the classes. In this example, I defined four classes. Yeah, the background, clay, quartz, and pyrite. And you can change the colors. And for each of this, for example, for background and pores, uh, let's say this is a pore right here. And I would like to label, which like right here. And I just select the brush tool and then just go ahead and you can change the brush size. Go ahead and paint the pixels you want. Click OK and it gets added to the other purple labeled regions. So once you're done, I mean, obviously go ahead and continue for the clays and quartz and pyrite. But once you're done labeling, you can actually go in this case, this is a, uh, this is a uh, I believe, uh, multiple images. So if I expand this, you can see this is uh, my slice number two, slice number three, and so on. And go ahead and, uh, and, and paint these. And once you're done, export it as an image, binary mask, and select all of these classes that you just labeled and download. And that file would be an OME TIFF file. So if I open it, it looks somewhat like this. And if you look at the histogram, you should see that the pixel values are zero, one, two, three, four. Zero for all the uh, regions where we haven't labeled. We don't want that to be part of our training because they don't correspond to anything. So we are going to drop all the pixels with a value of zero. The only relevant ones for us are one, two, three, four. Okay, this is the process if you use a Pierce annotate tool, which I highly recommend. If you use any other tool to do your labeling, fine, it's, it's still okay. As long as you know that, okay, you have uh, unique pixels, uh, pixel values corresponding to a specific region. So let's get back to our discussion here. So, so far, you know how to export your labels. Now let's uh, look at Gabor filters. And Gabor filter is a convolutional filter and it's got multiple terms, and it's a function of wavelength, theta, uh, phase, uh, sigma, and gamma. And by changing these values, you can generate infinite number of filters. Obviously, the system cannot handle infinite numbers, so you change these appropriately. But in this example, you can see I have a zebra. Again, uh, I covered this in uh, our video exclusively about Gabor filters, so I'm just giving you the highlight summary here. 
So by defining theta as 45 degrees in this case, we are uh, detecting all the regions that are aligned in a way about 45 degrees to this filter. This is just a bandpass filter. So we're just looking at all the regions that goes through this specific filter. Now by changing uh, uh, another parameter, you can just see how I'm seeing more of it. Now I move this vertically. So I'm seeing a lot of vertical bands and so on. So you can see how by changing the theta, the phase, and uh, the gamma, which is, you know, the, the uh, how much, you know, is it, uh, how small or big is the uh, aspect ratio is the term I was looking for, sorry. Uh, and so on, you can, uh, by changing these, you can actually detect different types of features. So just imagine just extracting 50 different uh, uh, features, like these type of images, by applying these digital filters. This is almost similar to now we are getting into deep learning where it generates these different levels of convolutional filters, except in this case, our filtered images are all static. Once we filter them, that's it. That's our feature vectors. In deep machine learning, typically the convolutional filters, they are trained. You say, okay, this is my initial uh, set of features, and then it does the training and then comes back in the next epoch. It's like, okay, so these filters are working, but then these are not, so let's change the weights a little bit. And then it keeps changing these weights until they converge. And then you can use that, in fact, as a feature generator here, but that's a different discussion. So that's uh, Gabor and Random Forest. I hope you again watch this video. Random Forest is basically a bunch of trees that are uh, ensemble together and each tree or a decision tree is making a decision. It's very simple. So a decision tree is uh, you start with, okay, uh, uh, shall I go out and play? Well, is it cold or is it hot? If it is too cold, okay, uh, I'm not going to play. If it is too hot, I'm not going to play. Okay, if it is rainy, I'm not going to play. If it is not rainy, I am going to play. Okay, if it is not rainy and then comes down. So it's, you're breaking it down into uh, individual uh, nodes and at the end of it you get a decision okay shall I play or shall I not play so in this case is it a pixel 1 or a pixel 2 or a pixel 3 or a pixel 4 right so there is a classification classic classification problem so that's random forest again please watch the uh, video dedicated to random forest to make more sense out of it and support vector machines is another uh, classification based on machine learning uh, falls into machine learning classification and again, very similar to random forest, it's designed to be a classification problem. Again, uh, you may see these type of images, which is uh, if you have two data sets, like one is all pixels with a value of one, all pixels with a value of two. Now, how to differentiate one from two? So it, it uh, support vector machines, it defines these boundaries, and uh, these are the support vectors. It defines these boundaries, and the loss function maximizes the distance between these. So in this example, the second one, this one on the right-hand side would be uh, uh, the problem where it converged. Now, let's go ahead and apply this in Python in our next tutorial to actually segment real images. In fact, let's work on the images that I used in this presentation and then see if we can put together a image segmentation machine learning uh, code. So uh, let's meet again in the next tutorial. Please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much.